Hello, everyone. Thanks, Fabio. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, we're here at Via Prenestina in the Pigneto neighborhood of Rome. I'm heading to an Ethiopian restaurant and cultural center, which is called Mesob. We're going to talk to the chefs, we're going to talk about the history, and then we're going to settle down and have some of this delicious food. We're going to have some lentils, we're going to have some doro wat, and we're going to have this injera, which is the signature spongy sour bread that accompanies all Ethiopian food. I recently visited Ethiopia, really enjoyed it but I was really taken by the really strong sense of national identity. They were occupied during Mussolini's reign in Italy, but they were never fully colonized, and they were able to fight that off. Haile Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia, is just a godlike national hero. The proud food traditions and the proud traditions of Ethiopia, I think, they really go hand in hand. And in this case, it's very much accessible egalitarian food, which is not that different from a lot of quintessential Roman food. Is there much of a, an Ethiopian community in Rome? Are yes, there yes. a lot of Ethiopians? Many. The influence of Italians are very strong in Ethiopia. In the time of Mussolini, you know, the Italians were there, so we share many things. In regarding the colonization, we are not colonized with Italians. No. But mm -hmm. for five years, Ethiopia was colonized by Italians. For five right. only years. There was yes. an occupation fight. Yes. But there was an emperor, Haile Selassie. Mm -hmm fought very hardly not to get Ethiopia colonized in 1960, 15. There are many restaurants and uh, hotels in Italians in Ethiopia living. Trattoria, Enrico restaurant. So for us, it's very easy to know about Italy, to come to Italy. When did you begin the restaurant? And my sister is the one who opened the restaurant. She's not here for the last six months. She's in Ethiopia. Okay. And what was the reason to, to, to start it? Just to make an associ cultural association, to get together, to gather Ethiopians, it's our aim. Are there other activities that happen here? Every year we do a coffee ceremony. Oh, you do? Yes. Oh, that's nice. I yes. think coffee in Ethiopia is the best I've ever had. The very important part of the Ethiopian meal is the injera. Is the that, injera, is yes, that right? exactly. And tell me a little bit about what that is. What is that? Injera is done is usually with the cups called teff. Teff. Yes. So it's unique. Everybody can eat injera. Mm -hmm. The small boy can eat injera. All women can eat injera, the old men. Everybody can eat injera. <laughs> As a breakfast also we can use it. But the process is not easy to make injera because it takes mm. time for the fermentation. Yeah. Sometimes it takes three days and four days, and sometimes in eight days as well. So there is fermentation involved the fermentation yes. in yes. making yes. that injera, and that's yes. why it tastes a little bit sour too. Sour, yes, right? yes. So Ethiopian food are based mostly in vegetarian food. Okay. And the vegetarian food consists of vegetables and legume. We have uh, many kinds of dishes in Ethiopia. The most essential part of the Ethiopian experience is the injera. It's got this like spongy, sour consistency. I'm just gonna take some off. You can see it has these little bubbles from where it ferments. It really absorbs a lot of the flavor in the different dishes here that are set. The way Ethiopians eat, they just eat with their hands. And so I'm gonna eat with my hands too, because I love to eat with my hands. When we called out Nachi to ask her, what is the name of this dish? She's like, it's cabbage. <laughs> What's wrong with you? So this is cabbage. And this comes with potatoes, peppers, carrots. We have some green beans and cooked in olive oil. It just has a nice softness. And then this yellow coloring comes from turmeric. It's also gonna get some flavor. I would describe it as a mild curry. It's not gonna have that overwhelming cumin-y taste that happens with a lot of curry. So much of Ethiopian food is vegetarian, but also meat is eaten. So we have some beef here and we also have some chicken, which is in this very special dish called doro wat. And that is going to be a stew that takes half a day to make and is flavored with seven spices, cardamom, cumin, fenugreek, and some other spices. And then some stewed chicken, hard boiled eggs, it's like a bitter, earthy, and yet slightly sweet, slightly fruity mixture. But a lot of these spices are musty, nutty, mushroomy, like of the earth. I really like it. Like a lot of the Roman dishes that we've had, the cacio e pepe, the carbonara, which are the quintessential Roman dishes that are very affordable. This is the kind of food that really everyone in Ethiopia is going to be eating. The very rich and the very poor are, are gonna sit down to a plate of lentils and injera, and that's the tie that binds the, the Ethiopian people.
I really hope you enjoyed this episode of Dining on a Dime from Mesop Restaurant and Cultural Center in the Pinieto neighborhood of Rome. The food is great. We've got to ride a scooter with Fabio, my new friend. Nothing could ruin the day, even Vesta being culturally insensitive. So, <laughs> cheers. That's it. This vlog is over. <laughs>